The second reading comes from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly, like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of, whole, of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Word of God for the people of God. Well, as I said, this is the uh, first Sunday of Advent. Um, this is really, I mean, now we have to remember, this is not Christmas season yet. Technically, Christmas season does not start till after Christmas in the church, um, in case you didn't know that. Uh, this, is, this is Advent season, and then we start into Christmas season, but we're in Christmas season, right? We really are. And, and am I the only one that feels like it snuck up on us? Uh, it really does. Why do we think it sneaks up on us, though? It's always December 25th every year. We know it's not a surprise. We know it comes right after Thanksgiving. Uh, if you pay attention to the stores, it starts after Easter. But Christmas season is here. And, and it does seem, especially this year, it seems like it snuck up on us. It seems like it just, well, just showed up. But this, this time of year, right after Thanksgiving and kind of into the beginning of December, isn't it kind of a, a blah time, though, too? Be, especially looking at the weather. The weather it just seems so blah. I mean, look at Thanksgiving. Did anybody notice the weather on Thanksgiving? I mean, talk about a blah day. I mean, it, it rained a little bit. It was gray out. It was overcast. It was chilly. I mean, it just wasn't a, a wonderful weather day. Um, and it kind of reminded me of this scripture. And, and I do want to share something else with you. Um, I'm sharing this simply because I found this out and I thought it was really, really cool. Um, the, the Scott people, not, not my family, the Scott-ish people, they actually have a term for a day like that. Anybody know what it is? I mean, it's, it's literally a descriptive word. I mean, it's the, the most descriptive word. The word that they use, the term they use is dreck. That's, a, that's a, actually what they, and does that not describe a day like that? You kind of have that gargle, kind of throaty sound. But that's what they, they're, they're using that term to describe a day that is just, uh. And again, it's looking at these, the scripture for the Sunday. The first Sunday in Advent. And this scripture, well, it's kind of a bummer, isn't it? This is not an exciting scripture for this first Sunday of Advent. It really doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? It is a very drach scripture. It's sad. It's depressing. 
And it kind of describes, for some people, this time of year. Now, for some, it's a good time, right? Because if you didn't get to come home for Thanksgiving, maybe you get to come home for Christmas. And so it's a time to go home, isn't it? It's a time to get ready to go home, to think about going home, or being the home for people to come to. Advent is about the joy, the longing of home, a home that, that will complete us, the kind of home that will transform the world, the kind of home we should all have. But let's be honest, not everybody has a home like that. For some of us, when we think of home, we almost have this Norman Rockwell feeling about it, right? Home is comfort. Home is love. Home is, is where you can be yourself completely and totally. But not everybody gets that, do they? Not everybody has a home like that. For some, home is a four-letter word. Home is not an enjoyable thing. And so, whether or not you had a home like that, I think everybody longs for a home like that, don't they? A home that loves us and welcomes us. No matter what sin we have committed, uh, no matter how we feel politically, no matter skin color or, or who we love, a home where all are welcome. And that reminds me of the Grinch. Now, don't get me wrong, the original cartoon version, hands down the best version ever, okay? You can't change my mind on that one. But did anybody see the live action version with Jim Carrey? It, it was, it's a good one. If you have not seen it, I encourage you to. It, it kind of fleshes out the story a little bit more and it, it is a lot of fun. But there's a character, Cindy Lou Who, uh, and she, talks about, she talks about kind of this idea. She said, no matter how different a who may appear, he will always be welcome with holiday cheer. And shouldn't we be responding to people that way? No matter how different they are, we need to welcome them home. Welcome them into the home that they may desperately need. This, this, I think we all have this innate desire to have a home, a place that we're welcome to. She said something else, Cindy Lou Who. She said something else. They, they, in this, the, the live action version, they had what was called the cheermeister. And the, the cheermeister was the one who kicked off the celebration and led all the celebrations. And Cindy wanted the Grinch to be the cheermeister. And of course, there was a lot of disagreement with that because, hey, it's the Grinch. We don't want him to be in charge of anything, right? But she said, now wait a second, though. According to the book of Who... The definition of the cheermeister is the one who deserves a backslap or a toast, and who go and it goes to the soul at Christmas who needs it the most. So, again, should we be creating a home for people to be welcome? Those who need it the most, those who need a backslap, a nice one, not not the kind where you want to knock them off the cliff, a nice backslap. We should be that home here on earth. You see, this, this Advent season is about helping us remember that we have a mission. We have a hope. We are people who have seen God work in this world, haven't we? And what's great is we, we get to be a part of it. We get to be partners with God in creating this hope. We are the disciples who make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We need to remember, remember the hope. You see, we, we sing these songs. We, we play the music. We, we put up our decorations. We do all of these things. 
And it should be because we're inviting people in. We make it pretty. We welcome them in. We're saying the doors are open, right? You see, it's our time, and that's our call to be the home. And not only is it time for us to come home, but it's also a time for us to bring others with us. Whether or not they've been to this home before or not, we need to make it a home for them. You see, the Grinch himself needed to go home. It was his time to go home. But I want us to understand that when I say the home, I don't mean this building. I, I mean each of us individually. Each of us individually can be a home to invite people in, to bring them in, to show them the love, show them the, the, everything that's been given to us. Now, many of you have maybe just started getting ready for Christmas. I don't know. No judgment here. But what's one of the first things you do? You make a list, isn't it? You make a list of all the things you got to do. So, I'm going to give you some stuff for your list. I want you to set your minds on the destination. What is your goal for this season, what is your goal? What is your ultimate destination? I'm not going to tell you what it is, because that's, that's between you and God. Next, I want you to decorate. And I'm not talking about here either. I'm talking about your hearts, your souls, your cells. Decorate them in such a way that people see you, they interact with you, they spend time with you, and they want to know what you have so that you can invite them home. You can invite them in. We need to have arms that are open to welcome everybody in, whether it's for the first time or the millionth time, welcome somebody home. Maybe it's old friends. Maybe it's the usual crowd, but you need to welcome in everybody. This season, we need to pay attention to hospitality. It matters all the time, but especially this time of year. Because if, if the church, and I'm not talking again about the building, I'm talking about each one of us. If the church is supposed to be a glimpse of the home that we are seeking, then we need to do some work, don't we? We need to make it so it's so welcoming, so loving, that people can't help but be a part of it. We need to, to really think about the welcome that we're offering people. You know, we, we, ha we light a candle for Advent, don't we? Every Sunday we light a candle. We light a new one. And somebody reminded me uh, this week of... That old uh, commercial, that hotel commercial, we'll leave a light on for you. You see, the, the Advent candles are not a countdown to Christmas. There are light being left on to welcome people home. It's a light that is going to be showing everyone that the gospel is alive. And it's living and it's welcoming them in. Now, when we look at this scripture that Denny read this morning, again, it's kind of a bummer, isn't it? So how do we tie this all together? How do we make this all connect? Because here I am talking about hope and joy and all that good stuff and welcoming people in. And then we have this depressive, uh, apocalyptic reading from scripture, right? I mean, it's talking about the end times. That's really what it's talking about. What's going to come at the end? So how do you tie this all together? How do you make this all connect? Because it sure doesn't seem like it connects, does it? But it does. It really does. You see, this Sunday, we're not talking about the angels. We're not talking about the baby Jesus. We're talking about something even more. I'm going to move away from the foreboding a little bit. We don't forebode enough these days, though, anyways. 
But we've got so many, so many things that are, that are coming at us that try to scare us. And, and this scripture can be scary. It can be terrifying. But actually, if you look at the scripture, if you look at it again, I've been known to read scripture more than once. And so I did it on this one. And as I read it a second time, I thought, you know what? Maybe Jesus isn't talking about fear here. Maybe he isn't trying to really scare us. He's sharing this information, but he's not trying to share fear. I think, I think he's trying to actually share hope. Because in the scripture it says, look at the trees. Look at the trees. And I think, I think he's not, he's not telling us to look at the dead branches. He's telling us to look for those little green buds that start popping up. Those little green nubs that you really have to look for. It's a sign of growth. It's a sign of life. It's still there. Even after our trees lose their leaves, what happens come the new year? When we get into the spring, we get new life, don't we? Those trees are not dead. They're just shedding off what needs to be shed off. And I love, he also says, stand up and raise your heads. I like that part. Because whenever you get sad or depressed, what do you do? How's your head go? It goes down, doesn't it? And Jesus is telling us here, he said, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to miss out. Don't do that because there's no reason to hang your head. Don't do that because there's no reason to be sad or depressed or scared. You can look up with your heads held high because you can trust. You can have confidence in me. He's telling us to pay attention. To be aware. And it's tricky this time of year. Because we get distracted by the holidays. Don't get me wrong, I love the holidays. But we get distracted, don't we? We get so turned away from everything else that we ignore the, the important part. Jesus is saying in the scripture, pay attention. Watch what's going on around us. And we say, well, I've got so much to do. You know, back during your time, y'all weren't nearly as busy as we are nowadays. You know, you're, you're kind of... You're not really in click with what the world is like nowadays. He's saying, though, pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Because if you don't pay attention, you're going to miss out. I'm going to reference another Christmas movie. There was one called Deck the Halls with Matthew Broderick and, and uh, um, oh gosh, Danny DeVito. Uh, if, if you've not seen it, I'm not surprised most people haven't. But Matthew Broderick uh, lives in this town, and he is the king of Christmas. He has calendars and schedules, and I mean, everything goes by how he has it arranged. And he's got everything done perfectly. But he misses out. You see, his kids are growing up. And he's so worried about Christmas that he ignores him. His whole life is about that. And he misses out. He's so worried about doing Christmas that he misses being a part of Christmas, celebrating Christmas, paying attention to Christmas. How many of us are like that? We miss out. We're not paying attention. But Jesus is saying, pay attention, look at the trees, look at all that's going on around you, look for the hope, look for the, those who need a home, look for those who need love, look for those you can welcome in. And see, that's the amazing thing about this season. There are glimpses of the kingdom all the time. You know, I... I think this time of year we have our, our emotions run high, don't they? For good or bad, our emotions run especially high this time of year. 
And it's something we need to pay attention to, though. We need to pay attention to what's going on around us. There are those that we may have known for years and don't realize that they need a home, that they need some hope, that they need some love, they need some attention. I have the, the Jesus stocking over here. And I, I said, you know, this is something, what can you give to Jesus in 2022? What can you give him for Christmas? And honestly, I think one of the greatest gifts you can give, other than yourselves, is welcome somebody else into the kingdom. Welcome somebody else into the home. You see, he's, he's already welcomed us all in. We need to now welcome others in. Jeremiah talks about that there's going to be a, a branch springing up. Of course, this is Jesus that it's talking about. And as I bring this all together, how many of you have, have out in your yard, it looks pristine, looks great. You get up the next morning and there's a four foot high weed. And you know for sure that sucker was not there yesterday. And my question is though, was it? Was it there and you just weren't paying attention? Was it there and you just didn't see that little green sprout starting to grow. You see, that's what this branch is about. It's springing up. It's coming forth. And if we don't pay attention, we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out on Jesus. If we're not paying attention, we need to pay attention to what's going on in this world. And look beyond those dead leaves and the dead branches and all the what seems like dead around us and look for the growth, look for the life, look for the hope and let that hope be our home and the home for others. Let's bow our heads.